Howdy folks, Cumberland Outdoorsman here with you again, and today I'm fishing in a beautiful Tennessee stream here. This is a freshwater stream that's fed by uh, springs that flow into this. Now this particular stream here flows into Kentucky Lake miles and miles down. But the fish that we're targeting are rock bass and smallmouth, possibly some warmouth bass and maybe some green sunfish. But mainly rock bass and smallmouth bass. And what I'll be using today is this Nico Helgramite and my vintage Daiwa HT1000 reel on this uh, Bass Pro Shops bionic blade rod. It's a shorter rod and the reason I use a shorter rod in these creeks is so that you can cast underneath these tree limbs and everything and make accurate casts. There's no need to cast really far but What's crucial is that you make accurate casts to be able to put your lure in the, these holes, these deep holes in these creeks. And then, uh, you know, see what, what can bite, <clears throat> what, what will bite your bait inside those holes because that's usually where they hang out. You see these uh, rapids here, and inside these rapids, underneath the rocks, we'll find uh, helgramites, which are the larval stage or actually called a larval nymph of the dobson fly and they also feed on crayfish we call them crawdads here in tennessee and they also feed on these uh, creek minnows you know both uh, species rock bass and smallmouth will feed on these uh, creek minnows here but uh, there's also some spotted bass and a few largemouth further downstream. But uh, I'll try to do a video of that later on this summer. But anyway, for now, we're going to try out this l little area here, and then we're going to move back up. But uh, with any luck, we should hook into some smaller fish. I mean, these are not big smallmouth like you'd encounter in the lake, but occasionally you'll tie into one that's two or three pounds, you know, and that's a respectable smallmouth. And these rock bass, they'll go maybe a half a pound. A good one will weigh a pound. I mean, that's a really good rock bass. But those are pretty rare. So anyway, let's give it a try here and see what we can come up with. Well, I just got here to this creek and my second cast there, looks like I've oh, hooked a small mouth. <laughs> he was right there, just went in. There's some small mouth in this creek. He jumped out of the water and he spit that bait out. They're right around that timber there under the bridge. Let's see if there's another one in there. Well, he made a bad dash for it again. See lots of sunfish and some smaller bass in there. Too bad I didn't land him, but I did have him on there. <laughs> Probably about a one pounder, something like that. on this side over here. Let's see if there might be one waiting here. I'm using kind of an old traditional lure here. This is a Hildebrandt nugget. This one's in black and yellow, black and gold. Quarter ounce. Try one of these uh, Nico Helgramites. See if that might attract a bite. Got some of these already rigged up here.
tie it with a uni knot here. Two, three, four, and five loops should do just fine. Yep, there we go. There's a small mouth. There we go. That's what we were after. Mm-hmm. Well, he grabbed that Helgramite. It's a little small mouth, but you know, right up under that, up under that piling there. That's a good fish, folks. Nice little small mouth. He's what, maybe three quarters of a pound, something like that. Figured I'd catch one right there. It's hard to determine when you have a bite with these uh, Helgramites because it, you're just skipping it along the bottom and then something will grab a hold of it and let go. And a lot of times it's one of these guys. No. Uh, we'll let him go. Go let him have some fun. There he goes. Something grabbed it. That's why smallmouth are such favorites amongst fishermen. They're just fighting little fish, you know. These creek smallmouth seem to be exceptional fighters. Maybe we'll try a little further downstream. Okay, I hooked something here. I'm not sure what it is. Looks like a rock bass. Oh yeah, beautiful rock bass. There it is. Normally we call these red eye. Like that Helgramite. Well, there's one, there may be more. It's good to see there's a few of those left here. Grabbed it. Maybe. 
getting some more further down here. Really got to kind of use a silent approach here. You don't want to do a lot of splashing. There's a smallmouth right there in front of me. Good one, too. Here's another one. Another red eye. I just love the color on these fish. That's a rock bass, Tennessee rock bass. cast here. There's a long ear sunfish right there in front of me. And what looks to be a catfish, I think. Right there, I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but it looks like a channel cat. I'm not real sure. That smallmouth I saw here was probably about a two pounder. Wished I had a little bit more weight on the end of that. Oh, there we go. There's another one. Another rock bass. Yeah, beautiful. Ooh, that's a little bit better one there. Nice rock bass. Watch it, buddy. Hooked him on the bottom jaw. Another rock bass. This is kind of an underappreciated fish, to be honest with you. They're sporty, they fight well. They hit a variety of different lures. They have wonderful colors, and I just love those red eyes. Quite gorgeous, actually. Take a little picture of him. Okay, they're laying under these rocks is where they are. There's a, about a half a pound smallmouth. He's about a third the size of the one that I just saw swim by a while ago. Let's see. The biggest rock bass I ever caught, I caught in this creek. I've got it mounted. Oh. Grabbed it, but he didn't, I didn't get him. Yeah, that, that particular rock bass weighed, oh, I don't know how much he weighed, but he was just over 11 inches in length. I know they get bigger than that, but that's the biggest one I ever caught. Let's see here. Oh, there's one. Another rock bass. Okay. Fun, fun. Sporty little fish. I love the black outline 
in these fins down here. Well, we'll let him go. There he goes. Thick little fish. Powerful. What's good is when you see a lot of smaller fish, smaller bass, that means they're reproducing. You know, you've got a good breeding population. And as long as these streams here stay nice and clean and people don't over harvest anything, you know, I'm not going to harvest anything. I'm just going to catch and release. But um, it's okay to keep a few, but you know, don't keep everything you catch because what you have here are microhabitats. The krill limit on rock bass here in Tennessee is 20 per day. And in my opinion, that's way too much, way too much, especially for one of these creeks. It ought to be more like five or six a day, something like that. Because I have fished creeks in the past where I caught lots of them and here recently gone back years later and caught nothing. They just, they just weren't there. And that's because they were fished out. cast there under that tree. I think there might be a smallmouth waiting. Oh, something grabbed it. Come on. Take it, take it. Ah, oh, missed him. Incidentally, what I'm fishing with today is just uh, this rod I picked up in an eBay auction. This is a Bass Pro Shops bionic blade graphite rod with a cork handle and a vintage Daiwa HT-1000. These came out back in the early to mid 80s. And they were the first bait cast reels that had this auto cast uh, thumb thumb control for your spool, auto cast spool control with your thumb. Okay, and they were also, as you can see, the first ones that came out with this MagForce technology. There's a magnetic uh, system in here that controls the amount of backlash that you might get. And it's also patent pending. The original one of these that I had was a PMA 1000, and I still have that. My wife bought me that back in, I want to say 1984, 85. And I've got several of these old reels, these vintage reels, that I'll be reviewing and featuring in some of my fishing expeditions. And what I like about them is they're so small and compact, they cast very well, very smooth. They're really a high quality reel. This is back when Daiwa made their reels in Japan. Okay, it says right here, Japan. And I really like them. Now I've got an older model that has the, th the uh, spool release here on the side before they came out with this design. This is also patent pending by Daiwa. But it makes it so handy, you know, you can put your thumb right there and just cast away with it, just like a bullet. I made about a 35 yard cast there with no problem. I'm going to try this spot right over here. It's a little bit deeper. But that's just to show you what I like to use on these creeks. And there's no reason you couldn't use one of these to go bass fishing at your favorite lake. Um, I know newer reels have, you know, 
higher technology, more bearings. They probably retrieve a little smoother, but uh, these retrieve pretty well. I think they're like five to one ratio, something like that. A five to one retrieval ratio. And the uh, PMA 1000 that I originally had, I've caught hundreds if not thousands of fish. And she's still running strong. This one here is identical. I don't see any difference between this reel and the PMA 1000. Okay, I've also got the SP 1000. I don't know if they came out in different years or what the deal is. Um, but internally, most of them are all the same. I also have some of the Procaster series, a little bit more of an elite series reel that has a glossy black finish, black and gold. I may use that one next time. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, folks, uh, right in front of me here, there's a big old crayfish. I'm not sure which species this is, but there's lots of them in this creek. And he's right, right there at the tip of my rod there, if you can see him. And the reason I'm pointing that out is because that's about the main diet of a lot of these rock bass. And smallmouth also feed on them, by the way. And you can use these for bait. Bass love crayfish. Let's see what's under this rock. There's another one just went by. Let's see what's under here. Oh yeah, there's lots of them under this rock. There's one right there. We'll see if I can catch him. Okay. Come on, I got him. He was hiding under a leaf. Oh, well, there he went. Let's see if I can get another one here. I see one right there. Boy, they are tricky. There's one hiding under a leaf, I think. Yeah. That's what they look like, folks. That's the One of the main sources of diet for these game fish in these creeks. These are some of the most colorful crayfish around here. Lots of big ones here. I may give him a try as bait. I get to one of those other holes there. Okay, folks, this is a Helgramite. I just found this under this rock, clinging to this rock. It was here in the stream. That's what we're trying to imitate. That's what a Helgramite looks like. A real one, anyway. And to be honest with you, that Nico Helgramite resembles it very, very well. When you grab these, you want to grab them behind the head because those pinchers right there will get you. And like I said, that's the nymph larval form of the Dobson fly.
go. Oh, it's another rock bass. It's real dark though. Small, but pretty. And we'll let him go. Let's see if there's another one in there. It's kind of a deep little pool right here. Something was nibbling on it. There we go. Ooh. That's a small mouth. No, that's a big red eye. Now that's a good rock bass. That's a good one there. That's a pretty rock bass. That's a female. Looks like she's full of eggs. Strong little fish. There she goes. right over there, right over there in that deep hole. I thought that was a small mouth as hard as that fish there was pulling. I couldn't tell. Oh. She just came out of nowhere. Right here in front of me here. There we go. There's a oh, there's a small mouth. Catch and release. A little small mouth right there hanging out. Caught him right there in that hole. Okay. Tied on a little Berkeley Gulp minnow on the end of one of these slider hooks and caught another fat red eye rock bass right here in the same hole. That's another female. She's full of eggs there. She grabbed that thing. Okay, got a new Helgramite on there. Let's see what what might be lurking there in that hole. Got to be some around these rocks here. These rock shells. Try casting right here in front of me here. Something came out, I just saw it. Not sure what that was, but Small mouth there. Right. 
Get him up here on the bank. Yeah. You liked that, didn't you, buddy? I know these are smaller than what you see people catch out of a lake. But, you know, they're fun to catch. That's a small mouth. I saw something lurking around over there and I thought I'd better tie on one of those Helgramites and boy, he came out and grabbed it. I mean. Pretty little guy. I just love him. So far I've not caught any spotted bass or any large mouth, but uh, Apparently there's a few in here, probably further down. And we'll let him go too. There's another hole further down there. I see some rocks. I guarantee you there's something over there. And while I'm here, I'm definitely going to give it a try. So we'll let this guy go. Here in Tennessee, if you're going to keep a bass, they have to be 15 inches. And this one's far from it. But he was a good little fighter. Came right out from under that rock shelf there, it looked like. Okay, here's another promising looking little spot. Kind of a deep hole here next to these concrete leftover parts of bridges. And it's a really deep hole right in here. Let's see if there might be some rock bass in here. Spot looks just too good. Oh, there we go. Another small mouth. Yep. He didn't like it when I popped that hook in him. All right. You get a small mouth on there, boy. They like to raise cane. There's another one, folks. About the same size as the last one. <clears throat> Small mouth. Folks, I know they're small, but I like to catch them because they they sure know how to fight, let me tell you.
Well, that's my signal. Barred owl starting to call. Time to head back up the stream.